here. This is something we're not really equipped to fix this, but you can fix this. Uh, Eastward.com. They have all the tools for polishing out stainless steel. So, ah. But what we're going to do is tape it off so we don't got to worry about it. And yeah, I was. I guess I accidentally had it on the beat on the up row, the up close camera. So what do you call it? They see what you guys are getting ready to work on. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, so we're live. We're live. Okay. Hey everybody, uh, we're going to go over hand sanding techniques, and this is my friend Ryan. How you doing? This is his 1972 Cutlass, and he bought it this way. It has a aftermarket paint job, a custom paint job. It is not a high-end paint job, and it has quite a bit of orange peel and some other issues. And what we're going to do is the big picture is, is we're going to do what we can to improve it without putting the paint job at risk by go, taking too much material off and possibly going through. We'll be safe and perfectly fine to do this. It has tons of paint on there, so. Yeah. But Mike will go over some different things at the when, once we get started. But as always, you know me, I have to do my spiel. This is our 48th, and another thing that I found out today, this is our 11th, 100th video on YouTube. So we have definitely kicked out some videos between you and I, Mike, yeah. over the last few years. Wow, that's a lot. 1,100 videos that we are, it's just, that blew my mind when I started looking that up today, because I was kind of curious to see how many videos we have, and 1,100. You know what I like about doing videos with Yancey? Because when it comes to work with him, it's, for me, it's one, and done. <laughs> he has to do two and done because he's got to work with me, then edit it. Yeah, then the edit. That's <laughs> a lot more in there. But um, I get paid to make people look good. So, with that being said, thank you all for tuning in again. Uh, this will be another fun episode. Uh, like I said, we do have an in studio guest. So, we're going to put him through the paces. So, I don't have to be on this side. I can be over there. He gets to be the grunt labor. And like always, like, share, subscribe. And if you didn't know, you can win $10,000 worth of detailing goods. A class with Mike. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is get the airfare to get down here, but we have you covered once you get here. So if you don't know about that, it's a $10,000 giveaway for once we reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. All the details are down below in the comments and the description. And also towards the end of this, I'll flash up a screen that gives you all the insiders. So with that being said, let's kick this off. I'm going this way, and you two get to work. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the term wet sanding. and. Uh, you know, a lot of people hear this term, especially in uh, social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, I'm just going to take a guess here, but probably 90 to 95 percent of all wet sanding in the world is done on custom paint jobs or aftermarket paint jobs. So. Uh, in the collision repair industry, so that's your local body shop, if you wreck your Honda and they order you a new fender and then they paint that fender to match the rest of the paint on the car, that would be a refinish or custom paint. And typically the painter's going to put it on a little extra, especially if they know they're going to sand it to match the factory peel. So there's extra paint there. But that's one of the times wet sanding is done if you wreck your car. Have you wrecked a car? No. He's not going to admit to it. <laughs> I'm not going to admit to it either. I've never wrecked a car. Okay. The other... You left a signature on a car? Is well, that what you're saying? a signature, yeah. <laughs> that's a different topic, though. Okay, so that's, that's collision repair. That's refinishing wrecked cars, usually modern cars. Okay, the other type of paint jobs are custom paint jobs like this 1972 Oldsmobile Cutlass. So at one point, somebody bought this car, they did an amateur restoration, and then they put a custom paint job, and again, in most cases, the painter's gonna put on some extra paint, at least more paint than you and I get on our new cars, anything we buy from the dealership, which we've talked about this a number of times. And we uh, just did that on my new Hellcat. We did. It was, it See was the fluorescent yep. yellow? Grab it those. was 4.5 and 5 was our readings on the brand yeah. new 2021 Hellcat. Brand so. new Mopar, and the paint thickness readings are between 4 and 5 mils. Okay, and, and we know from research and from, uh, actually, you know, my good friend, Dr. David Gaddusi, a chemist, president, and owner of Optimum Polymer Technologies is a chemist that before he started Optimum Polymer Technology, he helped to create base coat, clear coat technology. He helped to make this paint. And he knows from testing that it takes at least two mils of clear to envelope the entire paint job 
and protect it from failing over time when exposed to the world. Sun, weather, rain, you and me taking a car washes, whatever. You need a certain amount of material there to just to hold up to, to punishment, okay? And so when we measured the paint on Yancey's car and we're getting readings between four and five mils, you know, we can assume, because that's all we can do, that about two mils of that is the clear and the rest would be the E-coat, the primer, and the color coat of the base coat. And so the, the thing that tells us is manufacturers working with paint companies are finding ways to put less and less material besides the clear coat, but the base coat, the E-coat, and the primer on cars to cut costs on manufacturing because the paint job on a new car uh, from a manufacturing point of view is one of the most expensive part of, parts of building a new car. Now, but this is custom paint. And again, the, the most paint thickness gauges on the on the market, like this is a very nice Delfesco. Here, let me, can you tilt that over? Sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna calibrate it first. One okay. of the things I like about the Delfesco, this is an American made tool and it's, it's a 3% gauge. It's very, very accurate. Has a ruby tip instead of a ground steel tip. It's just a high quality tool. You know, you get what you pay for in life. This is more of the upper crust of paint thickness gauges. And to turn it on, you basically just use it and then if you want to calibrate it, there's two buttons here on the side. You just press them at the same time, uh, three times fast, and it'll, oops, it'll send it through its little um, self-calibration. And it takes in ambient temperature as part of the things it's calibrating. Okay? And also, like sheet metal, if you, uh, if you get a hot or cold, it can shrink and it can throw paint in the gauges off. So right now, this is very accurate. We'll just take a couple of readings here, Yancy. Does that work for you right there? Yeah. Okay, 0.7. 9.2. See, you have double the paint that I have on my brand new car. 9.3, <laughs> 7.9. Oh, that's where the painter didn't go all the way through. 8.6, 8.2. Let's go over here by the, the upper edge here. 7.7, .7, this edge. 10.4, 9.6. Yeah, that's where he was heavy handed. 8.1. <laughs> so it's between seven and nine mils, fairly uniform over this paint job. But anyway, the thing I just wanted to you know, drive home was that um, most wet sanding is done on custom paint or collision work, not when you go buy a brand new car. Like this is a 2016 Mercedes over here. It has the factory paint. Um, I would not wet sand a car like that, okay? You're just gonna get yourself in trouble. All you gotta do, it, it, I, I got an article on this, by the way. I got a lot of articles. Here's one of them. This is the title, by the way. You can type this into Google, add my name and pull up. Wet sanding removes paint. Compounding removes paint. Polishing removes a little paint. And when you're working on factory paint, pretty soon you're gonna go through. And you know, it's just, it's, I always describe it like this. When you discover you've went through the clear coat and exposed the base coat, it's a heart sinking feeling that overcomes you. And because it's gonna start to sink in, okay, the only way I can fix this is to get that panel repainted. You know, uh, yesterday I was talking to a guy that was chasing some scratches on a 1969 Camaro, custom paint job. It's getting ready for Amelia Island, Concours d'Elegance. And he's chasing, he's trying to work him out, get him 100% out, and, he, and it's single stage. And he calls me up and says, how far can I go? And I go, well, here's one way to decide how far you can go. Take that car to a couple body shops and ask them, how much will it cost to get this repainted? And when they tell you that number, that kind of scares you into trying to get all those scratches out. Because <laughs> now you're gonna realize, because most people what they do is they go through and then they find out what it costs. Find out what it costs first and it'll keep you from trying to take them all the way out. Just remove them. Just improve them, don't try to remove them. Anyway, so back to the point. Wet sanding is for custom paint, refinished paint, not really new cars. I teach a technique called scuff and buff, and that is for new cars. It's really safe because it's not very aggressive. Um, then let's talk about why to wet sand. So what, what's one of the reasons you think we need to wet sand this paint job? There's, what's, what do you see on here, uh, Ryan? I see a little orange peel and I see a little, I saw a little them, right? raised, raised paint. Yeah, so there's what they call a die back or shrink back. Grab your light and let's see if we can try to capture that. And also, I see that there is dust and stuff up yeah, on this, there. Yeah, this, this is lightly dirty. All right. Oh, you're bright. Uh, you're blowing it. There's a flake in there that's blowing everything out. Yeah, it's hard to film that flake, huh? There's, there's, um, there's pigtails. Well, I think once you get the dust right and everything wiped off, I yep. think that we'll get it. There's pigtails, and I shared these on the forum in my article on this. I don't know if... Uh, does that help you to bring out the pigtails here? Hand me a towel here. Oh, uh, here, let me. 
Let Actually, I have a brand new product here. Dr. Beasley made this. It's called Prep Wash. So it's a spray detailer that doesn't have any graphene, SiO2, carnauba, polymers, silicones, gloss enhancers, shine makers, bead makers, none of that stuff. All it does is clean the paint. And um, he made that because I'm always looking for a product that all it does is clean the paint. If I'm getting ready to sand it or buff it, I don't want a product that's gonna lay down graphene or SiO2 or carnauba or anything. I just want clean paint. And there's really no products like that on the market. So he noticed me, um, Talking about that. That you use glass cleaner for everything. I use glass cleaner for everything because glass cleaner, if you think about it, a good glass cleaner, you clean the glass, it doesn't leave a film on the glass and you can obviously see through the glass so there's no, there's no um, residue behind. So that's why I use glass cleaner. And Jim just thought glass cleaner was kind of harsh for my function. So he went into the laboratory and made a dedicated prep wash. Okay, so there we go. This is all clean. Now, can all right, you, let's try can that you capture? Try that again. If I use my get your light. To, get your light. Okay. And shine it. Here's here's pigtails. Shine it towards that camera, the the other camera. Okay. And come up back towards you. Back, 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 back. Keep going. Now tilt it down. Tilt. Keep going. No. No, I'm not going to be able to pick it up very well. Yeah, you can't really pick it up. But we it's can a see flake it that's killing me. Four. Yeah. But there's pigtail scratches here. So here's what those are. Before they laid down um, the base coat. They machine sanded this and they used the DA sander and at some point some of the particles came off the sanding disc, got trapped between the disc and the paint and put pigtails into probably the primer. And then when they put the base coat on, they put the base coat on and possibly even the, the clear coat on too quickly before they it out of previous coats so the, the paint was still wet. And the paint then does what they call shrunk back or shrink, it shrinks back and it exposes those defects that are actually below the clear coat. So Ryan, did you get this car in this condition? Correct. Correct? And this is your, your first little foray into doing this type of work, aren't it? Yes. So we got a newbie here. Yeah. Yep. So, so anyway, my point being, when you see these kind of defects, sometimes because as they're laying the paint on, the way it pulls back, you can actually visually make them disappear by only working on the top coat. Sometimes you can't. If the defect is underneath the clear, of course, it's clear so you can see it. You, you cannot remove it because you can't get to it. So we won't know till we sand on this to see what we can do. There's also a, a, an area right here that's kind of got me concerned. Can you, can you yes. capture this? It's like a little patch that's elevated. It's, yeah, well, not a bubble. It's like a patch of material under the clear. Uh, oh, I can kind of kind barely of see, see it. it. It looks like, a, yeah, I see it. It looks like, it looks, they, like it looks like they had a flake out, then they turn around and paint it over the top of it, is what it looks something. like. Something, it's like a little patch, but I can feel it. Yeah, no, that's so what it looks like. Like my, if there's a chip there, then they paint it over the top of it. Exactly. So my concern is if we sand that flat, you're gonna we get basically edges. green paint come upon our buffing pad. So we'll probably just try to work, we'll, we'll sand it lightly, but we will probably, I don't want to sand it flat because I don't want to buy a paint job. Okay, so. He back. makes the big dollars, so I, I would say take him up on it. It's like, you're a real man, <laughs> go flat. Okay, so back to why wet sand. So the reason you wet sand paint is to remove the orange peel, other surface imperfections or texture, dirt in paint. Sometimes when a car's painted, little pieces of dirt fall in it. But there's all kinds of little problems that are in the top coat. And the, the, the most efficient way to, to remove them is to sand that paint flat especially the orange pill, then buff out your sanding marks, then polish to restore gloss and clarity. And you want to you want to tell them like when you're sanding, you're leveling basically yes. is what you're doing is you're leveling everything yes. down. So maybe. so so orange pill is exactly what it sounds like. It looks like the surface of an orange, and it's hills and valleys if you were to look at it from a horizontal point of view. And so when you hand sand or machine sand, what you're trying to do is just knock down the tops, the high parts, until they're as low as the lowest parts of the valleys, okay? And then you buff out. Um, and the, the, the bigger picture behind this is what you're trying to do is maximize DOI. So DOI stands for distinction of image. A mirror is 100% DOI. When you look into it, you, you see perfectly your reflection. When you have orange pill and you look at it, and I'm sure Yancey's captured this, it's all warbled. It's, it's not distinct. It's the opposite of distinct. So again, one of the reasons people wet sand paint is to maximize DOI, DOI, distinction of image, by removing all the surface imperfections, getting that surface flat, and then when they buff it out, it'll be like a mirror finish. And that's what people always want in their car. They want a mirror finish.
You want to look good, man. Makes sense? Right, Makes Ryan? Sense. You want to look good riding down the road in this thing. For sure. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's why we're going to hand sand. I just, I just wanted to clear up some confusion because I know people see the term wet sanding and they see people doing it, but factory finishes are very thin. The paint is very hard. Your chance of making an error is very high. Custom paint jobs in the world, most all wet sanding is done on a car like this, a custom paint job or collision work. Someone's wrecked their Honda, they repainted the fender, the hood, or the trunk lid, and now they're gonna sand it lightly to try to match the pill and the fresh paint so it's uniform with the rest of the car. So when you stand back and look at the car, it has a uniform look to it. It's funny, because like our Detailing 101, we get people on there all the time, oh, I just bought a brand new Corvette, it has a little bit of orange peel. Wet sanding would be the way to go, right? And it's, yeah. uh, so, so when I see people talking about wet sanding, you know, again, most of the people, they, they, they don't have experience, they don't have the tools, and the tools mean the sandpaper or sanding discs, the backing pads. Um, back behind me, I've got a rotary polisher, I've got an orbital polisher, I've got a compound, I've got a polish, I've got backing pads. I have all, I probably have $500 worth of equipment here to sand this car down, and most people don't have any of that, and then they want to die, and they have no experience, and they want to take their brand new Corvette and sand it down, or let their buddy Jim do it, who probably also doesn't have all this cool stuff. And you, at, here at AutoGeek, one of the cool things is we sell the best of the best. And so one of the things I'm going to be sharing today is a, is a, it's called a finishing paper. Most of you would think of it as a sanding paper, but the quality of the paper, the, the grit to particle size and the way it's uh, applied to the face of the paper is so uniform that it's not referred to as a sanding paper, it's referred to as a finishing paper. The quality is so high. So let's go ahead and talk about that. It's right there. Yeah, you want to grab that? Yeah, yeah. In fact, we'll just bring this card over here. Okay, so this is a... Uh, oh, Ryan, you get to be Vanna. This is a uh, bucket full of water, and I've already put one of these uh, sandpapers in here. You can see it's rolled up into a little circle. And I got some backing pads in here. All right. But I got a piece of dry paper over here, and this is the Nikon brand. So this is a Japanese electronics grade finishing paper. So it's, the quality is so much higher than an automotive wet dry. So, so, so that's the difference, okay? You can sand it with whatever you want to. But what makes this paper unique is most sandpaper, the way it's made is, is there's an adhesive on here, the particles, the sand grit is dropped onto it. This runs upside down, they throw an electric charge to it and it pulls the particles up to it. And just because of the way electricity works, it, it, uh, it, it lays it down very uniform. And then here is the benefit. If you look at this bottom diagram, you uh, see. Just in there. A, right. a wet dry paper, there's no, you know, the average automotive wet dry, there's no control over grip particle size. So when you sand with it, it puts deeper scratches next to shallow scratches. And they're done that. And then when you buff it out, the shallow ones buff out right away. The deeper ones are like these deep scratches. They're called tracers. They don't buff out. So then the question is, well, okay, how do you get them out? Well, you can compound really heavy, or you could try to re-sand. If you use the same paper, you're just going to remove <laughs> the tracers you have now and replace it's them with well, the tracers. <laughs> and you just keep removing more and more good paint. So what this electronics grade does, it has uniform particle size and uniform particle distribution. And you need both of those in order to leave a flat sanding mark pattern. You didn't there, know there was that much stuff in sandpaper, did you, Ryan? No, not at all. If you can, <laughs> can you zoom in on these two pictures? Oh, man. Okay, so here's... Here's a, a very popular automotive grade, and if you look there, all the particles are just random. They're little pieces next to big chunks. And then here is the Nikon. Uniform particle size, 100% distribution over the entire face of the paper. Okay? We're good. Okay, and McGuire sells this, and I think, um, I think um, Griot's Garage also offers the same paper in their brand. Um, and then this also, just so you know, has a um, latex impregnated paper backing and it'll never fall apart. Now, a lot of your cheap wet dry papers, a lot of you guys have used them, you put them in some water and wait about 30 minutes, what happens? They disintegrate. They dissolve like a brown paper bag, they just fall apart. So these don't fall apart. So I'll go ahead and put this one in here. And what you wanna do is you wanna mix up some soapy water. So I put a little bit of black fire uh, foam soap in here and stir it up with my stirring stick. And you don't need a bunch. You don't need a bunch, just a little bit. And then as you drop these in there, and I also have a grit guard, so as particles come off the car where I'm painting or sanding or off the paper, they sink to the bottom and so I don't get tracers. And you just want to let this soak for about 25, 30 minutes before you use it so that paper is completely saturated. And then one of the reasons for the soap is it helps the face of the paper from loading up with paint so it quits cutting or it cuts ununiformly. 
and uh, it cuts cooler so once it's all the way soaked with water instead of a dryer. Um, these, by the way, are Meguiar's. These are a soft block, a flexible rubber backing right, pad. Hold them right there so I can... And uh, we sell these here at Auto Geek Plus. We sell the Meguiar's uh, uh, nick and paper. And these are cut and designed to fit across the back the, the width of one of these finishing papers, okay? And uh, then there's two ways you can use this. There's folding or wrapping. Now, I, I like to wrap, but I don't care if people want to fold, but I'll demonstrate both. So to, f to wrap it, you would oh, just... Oh, here, hold on. Um, why don't you get that away from your black shirt? Okay, I can put it over here. Yeah. Okay, so to fold it... Actually, would... let me see. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me see which camera you're on. All right, go in over the top of the hood. In further, down? The hood yeah. or the trunk lid? The trunk lid, sorry. Okay, down? Yeah, right there, okay. perfect. Okay, so to fold it, you would just fold the paper in half, and then you would place this on there and fold, fold. Your, that's the folding style, so you fold it over, and then everybody's gotta figure out how they're gonna hold it. What I do is I grab my pinky and my finger, I put it on the side, I try to get the other fingers here to kind of hold the paper down and also be able to put pressure on the backing plate, and then you're gonna sand like that. So that's the folding technique. The wrapping technique, which is the technique I prefer to use, is then you just take the finishing paper, line it up, and then you fold the paper, you wrap the paper around it. So there's folding or wrapping. And guess who has an article on this if you type it into Google? So that's how you would And watch where your seam's it. at. Yeah, and then, a, then again, you still gotta find a way to hold this thing, put your fingers on it so you can apply some pressure when you're sanding. All right. Okay? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just put this in here for right now. Uh, a couple other things. One of the things I do, so, like if you look, this is a nice big flat panel. But we got a real thin panel here. And one of these rubber blocks, see, they, they won't fit there. So how do you think we can fix that problem? Trim it down. A pair of scissors. <laughs> okay. Ryan so here's, for the win. Here's a uh, <laughs> Ryan for the win. Here's just one of the Meguiar's blocks, and I've just taken and cut a thin panel out of it. Then what about the, I know that we carry them, the rid sticks and stuff like that. And here's, here, just real quickly, here's one I've cut to make a smaller piece. You can cut these however you want to. But what I like about these Meguiar's um, backing pads is, first of all, they're simple. They're just a simple, semi-firm semi rubber with flat surfaces, because the goal is to keep that sandpaper flat, so you're just knocking down the tops of the imperfections. And the, since they're rubber, a sharp pair of scissors will cut these. We do carry the K, KDX, or KX... Red sticks. Yeah, red sticks. Um, uh, th 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 those are more for specializing. If you're really gonna get into, sp you're gonna go work for Chip Foose and Wet Sand, hand block out his cars, those would be good for you. If you just wanna keep it simple, the thing about this is these finishing papers fit these backing plates. And of course you can cut and make your own. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. And I'm trying to keep this process really uncomplicated, not complicated and expensive. So You got all that, Ryan? Yep. There'll be a test later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then uh, these finishing papers start, I think at 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000 grit. Um, the 2500 and the 3000 are really so fine that if you've got a defect to remove, uh, those aren't a good starting place. But the 2000, because it has a 100% distribution over the entire sheet of the paper, what I was always told was um, it'll cut as fast as anybody's 1500 while leaving more paint on the car because you're putting in a more shallow sanding mark pattern. So. Uh, so kind of figure that one out for yourself, but we're just gonna show 2000 because we don't know who painted this car. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Okay, you're so let's start saying, I know a lot of people on uh, YouTube go, oh, you talk too long. Well, you know, click away, you know, so <laughs> I'm here to try to educate you and you need a certain amount of, a certain measure of information just to do the job right. So what I'm gonna do, Ryan, is I'm gonna show you how to do this. Then, and then we're gonna, gonna throw you to the wolves. Then I'm gonna let you do it. So I just folded my paper around there. You can get down there and get yours and fold it. Over here, I have some clean soapy water. This is a clean water supply to spray down here. And one of the things you want to do, oh, before we get started here. Man, you're just all over the place. Well, <laughs> when we were first starting out, Yancey, remember I, I showed you the DA sanding marks in his trim? So what happened is when they were doing the prep work, they didn't tape this off or they didn't tape it off very well. And you can actually see places in the trim all around the car where they ran the DA sand or the sanding disc into the trim and there's now DA pigtail sanding marks into it. So it's just a good idea. To mask. Hand sanding or machine sanding because it only takes one pass 
by hand or machine and you put sanding marks into stainless steel trim that you can get out, but now you're going to have to become a, uh, a customer of eastwood.com and you're going to have to buy all these really cool tools for working with stainless steel. Okay, so I just... And what I recommend, the same thing we show here, Yancey, when we do headlight videos or teach in our class, is go ahead and put down two strips of tape. And that way, if you do hit it, chances are really good. Um, if you go through the first, you won't go through the second. It's always hard to push tape down with your skin, so I keep a towel around and just push it down with the towel. All right. And here's how you tape things off. You anchor your, pull your tape out, and that way you can steer it. I always see guys um, that <laughs> don't do this, and they struggle with getting it done in a quick, fast, efficient way. Roll an inch, stick it down. Roll an inch, stick it down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Seen that. All my friends that are painters are really fast at taping off. Me, I'm kind of slow, but I do a good job. I won't okay. say anything. Now, um, there's, a, there's the edges, we got the keyhole here, we got an edge up here, we got a thin panel here, and you know, there's all kinds of ways to skin this cat. I'm just gonna keep this simple, we're just gonna work on this major area, but if, if uh, later on I could show um, Ryan here how he could take and cut a piece Let's of sandpaper to fit this. Let me zoom in. And wow. he could come down here and knock out this panel here if he wanted to, see that? Okay. But you have to cut the paper to fit, you can't wrap a whole sheet around this tiny little rubber block. Okay. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do is figure out which direction you're going to move your hand. Um, for this video, it's going to work better if I just go ahead and sand across. There is no right or wrong. What there is is you want to let the panel talk to you. And usually, um, you don't want to sand in circles. You don't want to sand in a crosshatch pattern. There is such a thing called the X pattern for people that have a high proficiency level. But for most people, you're just going to want to sand in the same direction and, and keep it that way. And it gets kind of complicated, but I don't want to make this video that complicated, so we're just going to show uh, what works best for the camera angle, not for the car. Okay, so here's, here's my sanding disc. Here's my clean water supply. And I'm going to leave you this nice, easy area up here, and I'll tackle this area down here. So uh, here's the technique. When you're sanding with a soft block, and that's what this is called, you don't want to run the sandpaper perpendicular with the direction that you're moving it, okay? Because what's going to happen is you're going to get deeper sanding marks from the edges of this block. So what you want to do is just turn it a little bit. That's called cant. It's you cant it. I think it's K-A-N-T, okay? And as far as how big of an area you want to tackle, you want to be able to manage whatever section you're going to sand. Now, when I move my hand away from me, the further my arm gets away from my body, the harder it is for me to press down or to maintain the same pressure I put here because it's really easy right here in front of me to push down really hard, okay? So the further away, it gets harder to maintain that. So you don't want to tackle too big of an area. What happens is you take a lot of paint off where it's easy for you to push down in front of you and very little paint as you get your hand away from you. So a couple things to remember. And, and um, sanding, you know, when you're learning, go ahead and go slow, but in the real world, you know, a lot of times at a body shop, if they had to knock this car out, it'd be expected to be done in a day. Actually, sometimes two cars in a day. So you can't be like piddling around. You got to get in there and get it over with. Get in, get out. Get in, get out. So, and if you ever hear a high pitched squeak while you're sanding, that means an abrasive particles come off. It's got trapped between the sandpaper and the paint. And that's what's making the squeak stop. Clean the area, clean the paper, and then start over. So let me see if I can uh, get this going here. Now, how hard are you pushing down? I'm, I'm not pushing too hard. I, you know, this, this type of sandpaper cuts really well. I mean, you can feel it cutting, but I'd say I'm putting down about three to four pounds of pressure. Light pressure. And again, you know, the pressure's coming from these three fingers, so you've got to find a way to hold these things and put pressure on it, and that pressure's being pushed throughout the entire pad, but a lot of it's just right up in here. Okay. Okay. And then um, what I like to do, because there's a thing called top coat hardness. Every paint is different. <laughs> You're you know, killing me, man. I keep switching back and forth sorry. between cameras. <laughs> so there's sorry, a thing, people. There's a thing called top coat hardness. So, you know, until you know if the paint is hard or soft, you don't know how many strokes you're going to have to do, you're going to have to move your hand to knock the peel down to a level that makes you happy. So I always suggest make 10 or 12 strokes and then having a secondary... Um, McGuire's, it's called the E7200, E7200 backing pad. 
you can kind of squeegee this off, get the water off there, and then dry it. And take a, take a look and see how many 12 passes, 12, or I think I might have done 15. Okay, so I'm gonna need you to look at this, Yancey. Uh, you, your, sh your shadow is casting air into my thing. I can still see orange okay. peel. So yeah, you can still see peel. So what, what I see here is most of the peel after about t t 10, 12 passes is gone. And you see shiny specks, okay? The shiny specks are the valleys. And so that tells me if I wanted to remove this until it's 100% flat, I would need to continue sanding. And so usually what I would do is I would count my strokes and up and back is one. So one, two, three, four, and get a feel for how many strokes it takes me to get to where the surface is where I want it. And sometimes I don't want to get 100% flat. Like if you're trying to match orange peel, you don't want to knock all the peel down or it won't match the rest of the car. And, right. um, and with this project here, we don't know how much clear coat is on here. So what I don't want to do is sand so much that we end up buffing through and exposing the base coat, get green paint on our buffing pads, and I got to buy a paint job. Okay, so this, hold on one sec. What he, I just wanted to get in here. Well, he's talking about the high spots and stuff and the low spots. You can see the, the dark green that's in the middle of your guys' screen right now. That would be the lower spots that he hasn't sanded yet. And the white up on top is of the surface that he has sanded. So that's what he's talking about, how you can see the little pits and stuff down in through there. It's just showing the differences of the depth. Where you've leveled it, where yeah. there's yeah. still valleys. So sorry, you've leveled, I was just, you're, yeah. you're saying it and I was trying to show it, but I, I get you. Sorry. Okay, so, um, so to me, that's, I, I think we could take it safely just a little bit further. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out my section, then I'm going to let you do your section. Ooh, Ryan's almost on. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay. So. All right. Then you don't need a, a lot of water. It's not like, here's a garden hose, and let's run it. You just need enough okay. to lubricate the surface. So this is how I would count my stroke, up and back. One. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So if I did ten or twelve before, and there's twenty, that's just all about thirty. And um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, counting your strokes. Okay. So you guys can figure out how you want to, but. Um, I teach counting strokes when you buff, and I teach counting strokes when you sand. Uh, Makes it more, the, more effective and time, uh, good management, time management. Well, it's, it's, it's also good uh, material removal management. Yeah, no, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so. All right, let me. <clears throat> this major portion where I did most of the sanding, I would call that good enough, okay? I'm not trying to create a show car. This is not a chip foose car. Um, but this is good enough, and I can see I still got a lot of shiny paint up here, a lot of shiny specks here, some shine here, so I need to sand these areas just a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and knock those out, then I'm going to let you take over. All right. Okay. So are you ready for this, Ryan? Yeah, man. Oh, the thing I want to point out is when you're moving your hand over, you want to make, you want to just go over just a little bit at a time. It's called a tight sanding pattern, okay? If you're going like this, that's called making M's or W's. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You want a nice tight pattern. So you just move over like about a quarter inch at a time. I just got doing a race car. So. Okay. So I just sanded that section. Over that one up three times, counted 40 passes. Yancy, I'm gonna. You well, do. I, I, I well, got I don't want to mess that. with your camera. No, I got, I, you can okay. go sideways. I, I can if do you this. Want. Okay. But what I'm trying to do is, I don't. I always have this thing called the rule of thumb. I say about a thumbnail distance away. And I can kind of fill that with my palm where I'm at. So, two, three. And the reason five, for that six, is. Nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, I'll tell you the reason. The reason for that is to keep your edges seven, safe because there's usually eight, less paint there and you have a higher chance of actually seven, eight, nine, going ten. through the paint and having an oops moment. Yeah, so it's called a rule of thumb. Say about a thumbnail distance away from edges and raised body lines because you don't ever want to put sanding marks where you can't run your buffer or you will end up burning through the paint. Oops, let me get up close again. 
Much better. That looks much better. That looks much good. Much better. Okay. I still got some shiny specs in here. You can see the rule of thumb. I'm about a thumbnail distance away from here. And this is pretty flat here. We're only gonna we're gonna use the key. And this is actually there's actually a clip here to, to hold these two pieces. That's our center. See the clip up here? There's your center. We're just gonna do this half of it. So I'm gonna do a little bit more standing right here. This a little bit more right here. Well, if you want, you do the standing you from this over. side. Then Ryan, once you jump up on the top side, and let, let's get you to work over yeah, in here. Yeah, get over on the top side, buddy. Then. All right, I am going to fix the camera angle real quick. Okay. Come down here. All right, let's switch you to that camera. Aw, sanding buddies. So is it as hard as you thought it was going to be, Ryan? Easier than what you thought no, it was going to be? Seems pretty easy. It's easy when you're working on a really easy panel that's flat to sand. <laughs> Wait till you do the whole car. <laughs> So, um, you know, remember years ago, Yancey, we made that video, that time-lapse video where I sanded down a 1966 Chevy Fed Malibu? Malibu, yep. Yeah, and um, sanded down the entire car. And, uh, okay, so here, I want to crick your technique real quick. Okay. I want you to turn your hand. Up so, Let me get up close oh, so that way so we like, can so capture here's, that. Here's I had you, it like that. Yeah, you had it like that. So that's okay. You're learning. So take your hand off. So you want to hold it like this. And you're not going to sound like this, you're going to turn it just a little bit, okay? And what I would suggest is, because of the ability to manage an area, if, if I finished here, you sand this area right here as one section, and then you sand this section right here, okay? So here's a section and here's a section. Don't try to do that whole thing, you won't be able to manage it. <clears throat> Much better. It takes focus. <laughs> Mike likes this. He's like, this is nice. I'm on video and I'm not doing this stuff. <laughs> so Ryan, I, I think he's going to want you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, one of the things I always say about wet sanding an entire car, which you know a lot of people have never undertaken that uh, risk or responsibility, but uh, the enormity of that project does not sink in until you start. And once you start, like five or six strokes, all of a sudden it just kind of sinks. And I'm like, gosh, because you start thinking about all the hard areas to sand, then you got to come back and buff and polish. It's a huge job. All right, actually, job. here's a good question that just came in. Uh, Frank, what is the reason for wet sanding and not dry? Oh, hey, good question. You know, uh, this sandpaper here is actually meant to be used wet. Uh, there are sandpapers and sanding discs that you can use dry. And, it, and part of it is personal preference. So here's my personal preference. If you sand dry, you create dust everywhere and you breathe it in unless you want to wear a, a, a ventilator, a respirator. a respirator. And then that fogs up my glasses because usually I do this kind of work, I wear glasses because I want to see exactly what I'm doing. And it's just personal preference. I don't want to wear a respirator and I want dust all over the place. And also your sanding papers will last longer and your sanding discs will last longer when you sand wet versus sand dry. They'll tend to load up really fast. When they load up, they quit cutting. They start to mar the paint that you're sanding. So there's, to me, in my experience, there's more benefits to wet sanding than there is to dry sanding. Um, I know that there are a lot of guys out there that like to dry sand and there's some techniques to help you do that. Like if you're machine sanding, have a terry cloth towel. After you sand a section, shove that disc on there, turn it on, and it kind of cleans it, keeps it clean. Uh, so however you want to do it, but I just prefer the, the, um, the safety, uh, not breathing okay. in urethane dust. No, that's, and that's all good. And avoiding the mess. Because see, I can take a mop and clean that slurry up off the floor instead of trying to, what, vacuum it, uh, push it around the broom and vacuum it. It's all going to get in the air. So your choice. Okay. Um, looking pretty good for your first time, buddy. I see you just right in the middle where you two come together. Yep, right there. Right here? Yep. Yeah, and I would go ahead and do a little bit more up here because see those pigtails mm -hmm. are just now starting to disappear. Is so. that that one spot right there? Right here, there's a little... There's the spot. Yeah, yeah. let me... Oops, hold on. Let me... 
Let me zoom in on that. This is that I'm going to put my finger right behind it. Okay, it's right here. So here's my finger. It's right in front of my finger. All right, now. go ahead and move your finger. You see Let's it? See if that. Yeah, there's a spot that we're talking about. It's like a now, little island. Yeah, and to me, if I was looking at that paint, it looks like something a chip there, uh, or the primer when they're painting it. It might have flaked up, mm -hmm. then they sh just shot over it, tried to Something. bury it in there. That's what Can it Can you like. capture these pigtails at all through here or, uh, where or you right at? here? Where are you at? Right here is a whole row of pigtails. That's the, where's the other one? The other one's right in here. There's a whole those bunch are one, Yeah, those, those right ones there. I can see. Like silver there too. All right, you can see, all right, whoops, stop shaking camera. You see right in the middle of your guys' screen, the pattern, that's, let me, that's, whoop, that's as close as I can get. Um, right in the middle of your guys' screen, you can see the little swirlies going in there. It's like a, a, a pattern instead of being random. It's like a pigtail. It's yeah. a curly cue. Well, it doesn't look like it on here. Yeah. It just looks like a, a, a worm crawled across there. Sure. That is the, uh, what he's talking about, about the pigtails. So. And what, what pigtails are is a particle got trapped between your orbital polisher, the, sand, the face of the sandiness and the paint. And you remember, uh, most machine sanding is done with very small orbit tools, 3 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, 6 millimeter, 8 millimeter. I think the Scorpio might be 10 millimeter. But in, in context, these are small. And so when, this, when your sanding disc is spinning and then making an orbit inside that circle, it grabs that piece and it just makes that orbit. And that's what it's called a pigtail. It looks like a curly cue off a porky pig. A Actually, pig Roscoe Barge? I think I said your name. I'll go correct. ahead and, and hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Break, get out your uh, Defesco. Okay. Hey guys, you should take the Defesco and know how much clear you you. Well, we did. You, we took. We no, took, no, 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 no. Yeah. He wants to know how much now. So just kind of put it back into place and see where we're at. So we're getting you're, you're, pretty much the same. Yeah, reading. it's it's very negligible. Yeah. It's Two thousand grit, just scuff on the surface. It's not like you're going to see something go from 8.4 to 3.2. It's just, if you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, and <laughs> someone here has an article where they documented all this. And after wet sanding, with hand sanding with 2,000 grit and 200 strokes on factory finish, and then compounding polishing, I removed 0.4 mils. So that was a really aggressive sanding process. And I only took off 0.4 mils. So this is a very light sanding process. So one mil, maybe two mils. So let me just knock out some of these shiny speck areas. No, I was going to have Ryan do it. Oh, I'll do it. Let him learn, man. <laughs> Let him learn. He actually just took my big three-day class, and we did cover this in the class. So he's, he's not complete newbie to it. So when I come up here along this edge here, remember the rule of thumb? So one of the ways that I do that is, is as I'm sanding my pinky, I can feel where this is at. And I can actually let that sandpaper get right up to there, about a thumbnail distance away, and then go ahead and keep it there so I don't get too close. Now, I, always, I always love it when people ask, why don't you sand right to the edge? Why don't you sand right to the edge, Mike? Because <laughs> a good rule of thumb, the rule of thumb, is you don't sand where you can't put your buffer, your buffing pad safely. Okay, so, or you burn through the edge. And that's why I tell people, if you start going to car shows and you look at, you know, you, you obviously are looking at a, a, a car that has a custom paint job and you look in the middle of the panel, there's no orange pill. If you start to look up to the edges, you see the pill kick back in. And that's because in order to sand to the edge and then pull your sanding marks out to the edge, it, it'll take a, a long time. time. <laughs> okay, so if it's your car and you got the time, go for it. Most people don't, so they, they take the route I'm talking about. They just sand close to the edge, so they only have to buff close to the edge. They don't burn through, and then they don't have to buy somebody a paint job. If it's your own car and you make a mistake, you can pay for it yourself. <laughs> it's always easy to talk about things hypothetically. Uh, go out in the garage and do it sometime. Now, is there any... All right, Ryan, all right, have you, did you have reservations about doing this? Was there any fears that you had about before learning how to wet sand and stuff? Was there anything like that that you could possibly think of? Or is it just something like, hey, I, I want to be able to perfect paint better. Is that the reason why you're? I talked to class just to gain knowledge. I didn't really, I wasn't intending on wet sanding my car personally. <laughs> and then, then, then Mike said, hey. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come back over here where these pigtails are. Just Maybe one day, but I didn't have like 
I didn't have a set set date or. Oh, I hear a squeaky noise. Mm hmm. Not hearing it. You didn't hear that? I think oh. it's the car sh shaking. <laughs> There's pigtails right there still. Yeah, no, it's the car shaking. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so people out there, if you guys have questions about anything that you saw, please put it in the comments before. We're about ready to wrap this up. And, if, and if you didn't know, you can follow us over to MTE uh, Facebook page at 6 o'clock. The other half of this trunk lid, we're going to show you how to do machine sanding. So With Trizac. With Trizac, and that's at 6 o'clock over on the MTE Facebook page. Uh, Mike was asked to do a demonstration over there, so we'll be going live over there at 6 o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to call that good. And then the, uh, the next thing would be then to remove your sanding marks. And you did learn how to do this in the class. So what's the first thing you want to do with your pad? Clean it. Because you know where that pad's been, do you? No. So, so show everybody how to, I'll let you do it. Oh, yeah, throw him in there. Let him do let him yeah, it. I'll let him do it. Dun, 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 dun. So this is a cordless flex, and for cleaning your pad, bump it all the way up to the six. Look at all that compound coming out of there. Compound then actually clear coat paint. Beautiful, man. What you guys don't know is we've already sanded the sides and the roof and compounded them. Next is polishing when this video is over. Okay, so that, thi that thing's clean. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take some compound and... Um, oh, I thought you were going to let him do it. I am. And I've already worked with him on this, so... There's our pencil size shape of compound. Right, Speeds it down. see if I got that in frame on the other one. Yep, I Make do. me proud. Don't throw splatter everywhere. <laughs> you, you, you aren't live now, so... <laughs> see? That easy, people. And you see how he's using that up on the edge? It's a little bit better control. Yeah, it makes it look easy. Real smooth. Good job. Young Padawan done good. <laughs> Learn from the pro. Oh, don't say that. His head will get big. I can't. I don't have a wide enough angle lens on here. Okay, now when you can, try to go over a different direction. So maybe change where you're standing. Okay. okay. There you go. Go back up on edge the way you know. There I'd you go. I still go the way you know. Just from here. Yeah, just like that. Just run it just like that. Try not to put too much of your body on okay. the camera. Oh, man. sorry, sir. No, you're fine. Don't okay. worry about the camera. So, yeah, like this. Just like that. Now, as you're buffing Ryan and it starts to go clear, can you still see sanding marks in there? Mm -hmm. Not really. It's starting to clear up. And, and it's okay if you do. It just means you might have to put down some more compound and come back again. All right, let's wipe and see where you're at. Dun, 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 dun. Grasshopper, I have somebody on here who said, uh, Grasshopper doing great. First from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Thank you. That may be Humberto. Okay. Oh, and I'm supposed to do a shout out, sorry. Freddy, shout out to you, everyone down in Mexico. Okay. Que pasa, amigo? So when I come down here and look carefully at this, first of all, the DOI has been dramatically increased. The, uh, the distinction of image, okay? 
So, uh, so that was the goal, was to knock the tops of the hills down of the orange pill to be level with the valleys, then pull our standing marks out. Now, is it perfect? No. No, it's not perfect. Was our goal perfection? No. Because we don't know how much clear is on here. We can guess, but we don't know. But this still looks so much better than it did. Now, remember the, the high spot? Mm -hmm. Look how that's smoothed over. We can still mm -hmm. see where it's at. Now, when you leave here and you have all these skill sets, you can go home and try to knock it down <laughs> even flatter. And then if you do a great job, Hey, it's your chance to go from hero, zero to hero. Yeah. But if you if you go through, then you get to tell the wife you're getting the trunk lid repainted, okay? <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, honey. Uh, remember the pigtails? Like, yeah. So you can still see some of the pigtails right there, very light. They're not pronounced like they were before. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay, so, so again, uh, overall, to me it looks pretty good. There's still some sanding marks along the edges where you didn't focus, and, and I'm gonna just gonna hit those real quick. I wanna show people a technique for that. So a lot of times when I wanna do edge work, I'll put some product down. I'm gonna clean my pad. And then I'm just gonna do what's called finger painting style. So I'm gonna take some product, I'm gonna paint it along the edges I want to buff. So I just use this to draw from. And I don't waste any product, so I just put that on my pad. Picasso would be proud. And now I have two things here. Can you tell me what they are? What's, what is this, two things? Compound. Compound, but it's compound, but what's the compound? It's two things. It's abrasives and Lubrication. Lubrication don't wanna, you don't want to buff dry. Okay, so. He put you on the spot. Sorry, man. And then, I'm I know just going to come in here and let the tool do all the work. Okay. So I'm buffing right up to the edge. What your camera can't see is I'm not really buffing on that, the thin part where the sheet metal actually folds over. I just want to sit here and just kind of work that edge. And by not holding the head of this, you know, my arm is out of the way so I can see where that pad's at and what it's doing. Now I'll come down and get this area. Let's say I want to pick up my bead, so I want to come this way. Okay, I'm just gonna buzz over this one more time for you. Then I want you to go ahead and get behind me and grab the finish or the uh, beast. We'll pull all the holograms out and then we'll call it good. I have on a cart right behind me, right, Ryan? Yeah, yeah he's, he's just putting the pad on it. Okay. Just center in. He's hooking it up, man. Good job. Then there's some finishing polish there. Uh, compound that we're using, it's... Uh, Pinnacle Advanced Compound. All right, there you go, sorry. It uses Steven. amazing abrasive technology. It's really expensive, so don't let it sticker shock you, sticker shock you when you... Check it out, but I use it for a lot of projects because it works so good, you know, it just works great. So now there's holograms in there because we used a wool pad on a rotary. Not on yeah, a, I can get them. Can uh, you? All right, that's that angle. Oh, go back to the other light. That light's blowing, no. That Yellow? One. Yep. Let me come to this camera. All right, go towards you. Keep going towards you. There you go, you guys can see the holograms in there now. So the holograms are the wispy looking lines that are scratches in the paint that mimic the direction the buffer was moved over the paint and it's the fibers in this case that are putting the scratches in. 
Okay, so, no, you go to, you know how to do this. <laughs> He's like, I'm done working. <laughs> okay, so this is the- It's not his car, it's your car. This is the Flex Supa, not Super, but Supa, Supa Beast. And he has an original Flex Beast. This is the Supa Beast. Notice cords over shoulder. It's got a Rupes 180 millimeter yellow foam polishing pad. Uh, Pinnacle Advanced Finishing Polish. This will easily pull out the hologram. Bring him down. That way it isn't so loud for you guys. Then right after this, uh, we will start taking your guys' questions after we do the little reveal. And once again, I do like to thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate this. We're here every Thursday at 3 o'clock, unless otherwise noted. Very rarely that we take a Thursday off. And don't forget about the 10,000 once we reach 100,000. That contest details are in the description and I'll make another announcement towards the end of the video. So Mike, is it fun watching somebody else work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen you do it myself. Well... I mean work, in general. Well, I, it's, it's a great secret of mine. It's a very good secret of mine if, you know, don't let him see you sweat, you know? <laughs> now Ryan's doing a good job. And uh, he was doing a good job when we knocked out the roof and the hood, uh, side panels. So, we, what we did is uh, actually we used the scuff and buff technique. Which I'm going to get to. I have a question on that yeah. later. So For all the, the rest of the sections of this car, the reason um, we did real hand sanding on this and we're going to do real machine sanding on that is because this panel out of all of them just has the most orange pill. Yeah. And scuff and buff would fix it, but uh, we've already made videos on that. Yeah. So we just want to keep showing you guys different things to do. Let me try. All right. Let's go here. Looks like he's almost done with his section passes and we'll have a nice little reveal for you guys. Nice work, Ryan. Thank you. Wow, look at that. And if you guys rewind and go back to the beginning of this video and look at this angle, then fast forward to this part right here, night and day difference from wow. what I can see. What do you think, bud? You can actually see the reflection of you guys now. Yeah, and I can see the lines in the overhead fluorescent tubes, yep. you know? So that's kind of uh, hand sanding wow. techniques. And, uh, you know, look, nobody's going to become an expert the first time they do this. In my classes, what I do is I try to give everybody a foundation they can build on. And really, the only way to become an expert is to do it. And people that really want to be good, you know, it's like I told you, go get a job at a body shop. <laughs> they will let you sand till your heart is content. <laughs> and, uh, All right, Ryan, how many uh, section passes did you just do there? I did eight. Eight? Okay. There you go, Humberto, you did eight. Dude, this section and that section? So you did two, or did the whole thing? I did, I did just to like here, I couldn't okay. reach further. Okay, yeah, it looks good and all the holograms are out. Okay. Yep. And uh, this section's done. We're gonna put a ceramic coating on this. This paint's cured, so we don't gotta let it cure. It's not like fresh paint. Now, someone asked about uh, scuff and I buff. I'm gonna get all that and I'll, I'll bring that We're question. We're done with that. I'm, right. I'm ready to show scuff and buff. No, 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 we're gonna, okay. we're going on questions. I'm already at an okay. hour in. Okay, let's do it, let's <laughs> do it. I gotta move Join on, over here, man. you comfortable? I gotta move, man. Jesus, all right, you guys know, whoops, that's the wrong button. Here's the right button, it's time for viewer questions. Yes, you ask, I tell, he answers, and we all get along and have a merry, happy little life. So with that being said, let's go ahead and bring me up on here so that way I'm not the talking head from the nether, which I say every week, so you guys are probably getting old of that. I'll have to come up with something new. 
All right, let's go back up to the top. We have Freddy Bello. Hey, hola, come here. Uh, he is from Mexico, talking to me on Facebook earlier. He says, hello, hey, what's up, what's up? Uh, Richard, our buddy Richard. I hey, have, have 1,099 downloaded, so I guess I missed one. It's this one. This is the 1100th <laughs> one, so you can't download this one. Uh, we have Travis joining us in from Germany. And I did reply to this one, Richard, again. Uh, Yancey's hair looks like it has been seen some speed recently. Yes, my Hellcat's parked <laughs> outside, uh, which I'm not going to put it on any live videos until we get done doing our series of videos that Mike and I have been doing with that. And if you're not familiar with that project that we're working on, we are doing what you should do from a brand new car from the minute you get it. So we just started that, what? Yesterday? Two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago we Tuesday. started that series, and it's going to be a recorded series. I almost have the first one re done. Yeah. Should I release it all at once, or should we do it, like... All at once. All right, so we'll put, it, we, we'll put it all at once. So once we get it totally done, then I'll release that whole video series. But that is in the works, so it is coming. Uh, we have Francisco. He's saying hi. Uh, we have Brandon, another great video. Thumbs up. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we have Javier tuning in from Ecuador. Well, he's rambling. Look over here and get to where you can see the overhead light uh, and see how crisp and clear the lines are. Then as we get closer, see how the, the orange pill kicks back in? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all I was talking about. And if you go to car shows and look at cars that are painted, you'll notice that they're perfect in the middle. But as soon as you start getting the thin, hard, intricate edges, things like that, orange pill usually kicks back in. Okay. The, <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Travis, he, he likes the eraser. You, you use the eraser, don't you, for cleaning paint? Have you ever used that? Yeah, eraser works good, yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, it's you know it's kind of it's a uh, it's got a lot more harsher solvents, and it's less water based. So for cleaning paint, you still need water. Uh, dirt breaks down with water, and if you just use like pure solvents, you'd find out dirt doesn't break down with just a pure solvent. For example, say you just want bought some mineral syrup to try to wipe down a dirty car, it's not gonna feel good because there's not enough water to dissolve normal dirt. So a good prep wash is actually more water-based than solvent-based, and eraser is more solvent-based. So yeah, it'd work, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Okay. Um, we have Humberto, or, or he changed his name to first from Puerto Rico. And, and kind of back on that, glass cleaner is more water-based, so yep. that's why I quit using things like prep or the Blackfire paint prep, which are all great things, but just something more water-based for dirty cleaning. Ability. Okay. Now, he, uh, Humberto uses, I use one-third acetone and two-thirds blue Windex as an IPA. You're kidding me. That's what he put. Wow, acetone's a hot solvent. It's really nasty stuff. You don't get in your skin, and it's way too overkill for car paint for cleaning. But hey, if it works for you, my gosh, go for it. All right, we have Jay. Every car has orange peel. Some worse than others, like the newer Chevys. Oh, my God. Yeah. Have you seen those? I don't pay, I don't pay attention. Wow. I quit looking for orange peel in new cars because I already know it's there, so why look for it? I, I just noticed there's like how good are their paint yeah. systems. Well, and, I get oh you. When, uh, when I, I detailed the black C8 like last January or February when they first came out, and I looked at the orange peel at that point just to see what level was on the new C8s, and I didn't think it was horribly bad, not, not, as, not the worst I've ever seen. All right, let's go here. We have Grant. Uh, Yancey, hope the new cat is all Yes, it is awesome. And maybe a question for everyone. Can we quickly discuss the difference between scuff and buff and uh, peel removal so gyms don't get confused? Uh, yeah. Jim, hey, you caught on. I like that. Scuff and buff is a technique that I came up with years ago. I've probably got four or five different car projects where I show how to do it. But scuff and buff is like really simple stuff. So this is a nano skin hand backing pad. It's meant actually to hold their nano skin, uh, uh, nano skin decontamination pads, the polymerized rubber things that take a piece of clay. But what I do is I take this, I put on an interface pad. This is actually the Grills Garage six inch interface pad. Center it up and look, it fits a Trizac. 3,000 six inch pad. So now I can stick this on here and it takes really no skill to hold this because the backing, plate, backing strap here, it keeps it on my hand. And then we no, did no, sand no, this no, down no. here. I'm running short on time. Dude. Okay, <laughs> but now I just come down here and I just would sand this like this. And it's because it's 3,000 grit, it's very, very safe. And because I'm, it's a flat disc, it is knocking down the tops of the pill. And uh, I just use it when I, when I want to work on factory paint and just lightly knock down the pill. That's what I use it for. So it's not as aggressive as using the technique that we just oh, did. Oh, no, no, nowhere yeah. near as aggressive as actually using a piece of sandpaper on a backing pad. Okay. 
All right. Yes, it looks good, huh? And we do have a, we, which car did we do that scuff and buff on? It's we one did of our it, live ones. It was ones. a 37 Ford Woody. Yeah, if Remember you go that? through this playlist, if you're watching on YouTube or even on Facebook, uh, look, uh, scuff, and buff, scuff and buff technique, and it's an old Woody, right? It's a maroon colored yeah. Ford Woody. Yeah. Yep. Probably Google that and it'd probably come up. Uh, John Garrett, cameraman, don't be annoying. Well, sorry, that's my job. Uh, let's see here, Steve Trucks, hello. Uh, oh, this is, I guess, when you're talking about people think we talk too much. I don't think you talk too much. I love the information. You know what? Thank you. Those that listen, learn. Uh, <laughs> just, just saying. Uh, CJ Moore, thank you. Keep on rocking. Um, all right, here we have Pat Patris, 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 Patris. Uh, they should create a watch movement count. Yeah, someone could probably do an app that does that, but you know, when you get out here and get going on it, you, you get into a rhythm, and uh, it's not that hard. I do count my strokes, but I usually, you know. Or you can get into EDM music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just. Whatever it takes, but you know, even if you just visually monitor, like sand a little bit, wipe, and see if the pill's flat as you want. Then right. Actually, we have this guy on. coming in, John Vargo. Uh, counting strokes is uh, certainly one way to skin the cat. Elapsed time is another method that I like to use. Yeah. Whatever works. I mean, if you find a process that works for you and you get good results, run with it. We're just trying to show you another way, just in case you haven't did it this way. Uh, John Vargas is a professional painter, too, so, yeah, so you I listen to him. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> You've been, you did this once or twice. All right, we have John, another John. There's Johns around here today. Uh, let's see here. I went to one of Mike's workshops here in Dallas 15 years ago. I learned so much. Do you remember that class? Yeah, that would have been uh, the first roadshow class I taught for McGuire's, I believe. And uh, it would have been a lot more limited in scope, tools, pads, products, and techniques, but still good stuff. Okay. That was in the very beginning when people were starting to switch over from working by hand to the dual action polishers that Griot's and Meguiar's introduced to the market. All right. I then think. then we have John Vargo coming back in. Drying the surface and inspecting for shiny spots to me is the most critical aspect of this process. That's yep. how I do all mine. Yep. Uh, let's go here. Frank, what is the re... Oh, we already did that one. Sorry. Uh, Rami, Rami saying very nice. Um, all right, we did that one. John Var Vargo, I'm a sand to the edge guy. Yeah. Well, but you probably get paid to sand to yeah, that edge, don't you? You're better than me. Uh, <laughs> I never, you know, everybody could figure it out. But yeah, John probably, John has uh, got a background in sanding and doing show car work. So, um, you know, it just depends on y your level of passion for your own credibility and the work you put out or... If you're doing this and you're being paid for it, it's your own car. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you know, doing your best works possible. Now, it, look, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. If I want to sand yeah. right next to this edge, I, I could do something like this. I could put a real thin piece of uh, 3M blue vinyl tape there. I could go ahead and sand there. And then instead of trying to bring out an eight inch pad and pull my sanding marks out, I could throw the uh, Rupes Nano with the microfiber wool pad and very surgically pull those sanding marks out. The whole idea is to sand and buff without making a mistake. And you know, the closer you get to the edge, you know, a lot of people don't have a, a, six, a $400 to $600 Rupa's Nano and all the pads and tools and batteries to go with it. A lot of people can go down to Harbor Freight and buy a $40 rotary buffer, and that's the only tool they got, and they're gonna try to do everything with it, and that's where you start to get into problems. You don't have the right tools, so. Okay, okay. then we have John, another John. This is the day of Johns, wow. Okay. You, there's a lot of Johns on here. Uh, could you pop the trunk and to get those edges, then, the other John or comes in. Yes, popping the trunk or opening the door is something I do regularly. Yeah, you can. All right. Yep. Then we have CJ Moore. I washed a little late. What grit sandpaper are you using? That was 2000. 2000? Yeah, if you pop the trunk lid, you know, you get this edge away from this area here. And, but still, at some point, see, it's easy to sand. That's putting scratches in. The tricky part's getting them 100% right. out. That's my standard. I want every sand work I put in out. And if I pop the trunk, then there's a technique called buffing off the edge where your rotary pad spins off the edge instead of grabbing. And we showed that in a recent video. But still, 
you're, you know, once you start buffing on this edge, the paint tends to be thinner there. It's a high point, more pressure is going to be created there. And if you're not careful, you're going to burn through. So, you know, it just depends. Like a lot of times, John and John, when I create these videos, I have to imagine that the people watching this have never done any of this. So I try to keep them as safe as I can because everybody can go out in the garage and as they get their skill level and their experience level, they can start figuring out how to do all this stuff on their own or okay. watch another advanced video on it. Okay, uh, we have Jason, thank you, not another John. Uh, what thickness would be, should be left alone and not to remove orange peel on a custom paint job? What thickness should yeah. be left alone? Yeah. Well, we just measured your brand new car is between four or five mils, and I would, I would um, compound that because I think all the clear coast there, but as far as sanding goes, look, you know, if you're working on a factory finish, if you don't have any experience or skill, you probably shouldn't be sanding on it. Um, it's easy to sand on big flat areas. You start getting to these areas and you're, you're at some point when you go to get your sand marks out, you're going to go, whoops, and then it's all going to sink in and you're going to go, dang. That's the uh-oh. I got to buy a paint job, you know? So 8.1, 8.7, 8, 10.2. Well, let's put it this way. If, if the average clear coat is two mils at the minimum. Minimum. All right, so if you measure your paint and it's at four or 3.7, I would not wet sand that. My general rule of thumb in the past is if a paint job is thinner than four mils, I didn't want to get aggressive no matter what I was doing. Yeah, exactly. You know, so just, just, a, rule, just a general rule of thumb. Yeah, all right. Now, uh, <laughs> Humberto, <laughs> grass up are doing great. <laughs> 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 then you got another guy coming on here, Steven. Put in that work in, flex our muscle emoji. All right, here's, another, here's actually a good question. Uh, Freddie Bello, uh, small blocks and sections are recommended, but how about large blocks on large flat areas? No, there's, there's, there's a lot of different um, sanding backing pads on the market. You know, do your research. Motor Guard's one that makes one. 3M makes a bunch. Uh, usually, and I say this in all the videos, usually I tend to show the things we sell here. The boss likes that. The boss doesn't like me really showing things that you got to go somewhere else to buy. Mm -hmm. We sell everything I just showed you. So, uh, and you know, look, Auto Geek does not cater to the body shop industry or the wet sanding industry. We have a very, very small percentage of sales in that area. So, it doesn't really make any business sense for us to put a lot of focus and attention on that, either in classes like this or videos like this, or in stocking the products because they just sit there and get dusty. You know, people buy car wash. That's what the average yeah. person washes their car. What do you yeah. think we sell a lot of washes? So, hands. Uh, but yeah, do your hands. research. Um, I, but you know what? For me, I tell you, I've done this for years now, decades, and this. You know, I'm always telling people this: K I S S. Keep it simple, Simon. Simple block, flat surface, flexible matches the curve. It's a really mm -hmm. nice backing pad for the paper that I use it with. You can make things as complicated as you want or as easy as you want. I tend to like make things as easy as I can. Okay. Uh, we have Frank coming in. Hard to see the pressure that you put on the machine. I think you were talking about while we were wet sanding. Uh, so that was very light pressure, maybe like two to three pounds. Yeah. The rotary, when you're using the rotary, about how many pounds of pressure are you oh, putting down? Oh, I, I think we're like, like five, seven, eight like pounds. A little bit when you're of going up on a edge like that, you know, you're pushing on You're trying to yeah. shove them fibers and abrasives in and cut. You're cutting that paint. You're mowing it down. Then the final polishing. The final you know, polishing, the weight of the tool plus another five pounds, yeah. engage the abrasives of the paint, and pull out the holograms. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And yes, Stephen, that was Pinnacle Compound. And if anybody is wanting to know all the products that we use, are listed down in the comments down below. Uh, we have Ricardo Martinez. I'm Richard from Argentina. We met at your class in Buenos Aires for a sh for sure a good car painter that knows how to leave paint flat will save sanding time. Yes, That's true. Yes, love those people. Yeah. Uh, don't you think the same? Yes, we I, just answered that. Yes. I, I've been to Rich <laughs> Evans' shop. I've worked with Rich Evans uh, out there at Huntington Beach Body Works, and that's one of the, his claims of fame, man. He lays down a paint job. It, it don't need any sanding. It's just so flat. His painter has his booth, his gun, his process, his paint Nailed. system dialed in. So, you yeah. find those people, you, you hold on to those people. Yeah. Because they're, 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 they're rare nowadays. It, yeah, it saves a lot of time and work. All it right. comes out perfect. Okay, here's a good one. Nick, uh, is there a reason when you were wet sanding that you were not doing a cross hatch motion instead of going straight? I was under the impression doing it that way left sanding marks from the paper. Just curious. 
Uh, well, there's there's a couple theories on that, but um, across, uh, no, I, ne I never crosshatch with the same grit. What that's going to do is it's going to lead to scratches like this. It's going to be a big mess, and if you get them all out, you're lucky. Um, there is a sanding technique that Rich Evans taught me called the X pattern, which is like a crosshatch pattern, but it's when you go from 2,000, you sand in one direction, and then when you go to 2,500, you'd sand across it. The theory being is you'll be able to tell when you've worked all the 2,000 out because the only sanding marks you'll see left are going 90 degrees to the original sanding mark pattern. Okay. But the, on paper, that sounds good. For a bunch of guys to sit around at the bar drinking beer and talk about how great they are, they do that. That's another thing. Uh, to actually do it on a paint job, yeah, I've never, saw, I've never met anybody that does it. I just mean people that talk about it. We did it to the Meguiar's trucks. We used the X pattern on the Meguiar's trucks. Now, we're talking about huge, yeah, flat huge. trailers, big, flat surfaces Black. where you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could do this, then you could do this, and then you could do this and knock that peel down and get them flat. They put 10 coats of clear on those trucks. But for stuff like this, just keep it in straight lines. I did 2,000, pulled my sanding marks out like that. Okay. Uh, all right, let's enter the speed round. I need to have like a little sound thing for that. Work uh, on it. <laughs> Finjack, is it worth trying to wet sand the scratches that are up to the primer? If you're trying to go down that, <laughs> you went all the way through the clear and through the base. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, if now, if he means like because of the die back, or the shrink back, yeah. then uh, look. At, at some point, you know, your intentions are good, but when you see the color of the base coat on your pad, it's a bad feeling. It's a really bad feeling. Just you know, is, is the car a show car? Is it going to be competing at a Concours Elegance? Is it your daily driver? Is it even just a nice street rod muscle car like this, where you want it to look good, but it doesn't look perfect? Okay, okay. just get it good. You know, leaving some paint on there is going to help the paint that's on there to endure over time. Getting it so perfect, but you left it whisper thin means... It's going to well, fail. <laughs> yeah, even though you didn't burn through or make a mistake, it now looks expose good. the floor to the center wherever you live, the, the, the paint job fails anyway because you didn't leave anything there. You want to leave something there to hold up over okay, time. Okay, moving on. Uh, yeah. David, all right, you just mentioned new paint. How long should you wait before ceramic coat freshly painted? Well, the thing about sealing paint is there's no paint manufacturer that I know of that recommends sealing paint until at least 30 days go by for outgassing, okay? So 30 days. Okay. Uh, I always say, what's the hurry? Yeah. What's the hurry? Wait 30 days. If you yeah. just got your car painted, wait 30 days. Then do wax it, put a coating on it, whatever you want to. Okay, we have Rami come in here. I think, you, I think if you use more water without soap, you will get a good and fast uniform 2,000 grit wet sanding, wet hand sanding. Okay, I'm gonna use soap, but you don't have to. Okay. Um, it's all about loading up the paper. I mean, yeah. I just sanded for a little bit there. Look, you can see paint is loading up on the front of this disc, you know, so paint loads up when there's no lubrication. Okay, we have Benji Davis. Hey, Benji. Hey, Benji. Uh, Mike, is there, there is a big debate about whether IPA diluted with water swells the paint. Some swear by it and some scoff at it. Please elaborate. You know, um, I'm the guy that actually wrote, wrote the original how to dilute IPA to chemically strip paint to visually inspect it to see that you got all the defects out. And what I say about that article, and it's in my first book, is I never wanted to write it. I'm not a big IPA fan. I like to buy a product that was actually formulated by a real chemist to do the thing I want to do. IPA is people that want to be cheap, go down and buy it at your drugstore for four or five bucks for a 60 ounce bottle and mix that with water. It's a cheap way to create a solvent. And it's not even a very good solvent. It offers no lubricity. So, you know, my input is, is buy a product that's actually meant to do the thing you want to do. As far as swelling paint, Isopropyl alcohol is a hot solvent. So whether or not it swells the paint probably depends on how you dilute it. In my how-to book, as an author, I wrote, no one's ever challenged me on it, and I asked four experts in the industry, they had me dilute at 25%. So that's, that's buying a 50% bottle of IPA in a 60 ounce bottle, pouring half of it Pouring all of it, pouring all of it into a 30 ounce bottle and adding water, that gives you a 25% solution, which is very mild. And and if you're just spraying it on, and wiping it off, that shouldn't be ex, you know swelling the paint. But I tell you, if you take, you can buy IPA commonly at 50, 70, and 90%. And if you're using it straight at 70 or 90, then yeah, it's probably swelling the paint because you shouldn't be putting it on the paint. 
Okay. And Benji, again, going to go right back to him again. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the CarPro denim pads for Orange Peel? We talked about this in a previous video, but here's what I've always said about them, and I have an article on this that dates back to the time they were introduced. I think that, I think that for me, because I've got the skill set, the experience, and access to the right tools, if I want to remove Orange Peel, I'm going to use a sanding process, not a denim pad. The denim pad does work. I think to make that, that approach work the best, you really need to get the right compound. And the problem with most compounds is like this compound. I want, I want you to feel this between your fingers. And is that, you feel no grit, right? There's mm. nothing there. It's like sunscreen okay? lotion. And so many of the good compounds are like Jergens hand lotion. You don't feel nothing. And I think the denim pad would work better with horrible compound where you can actually feel the grit. So now you're trapping in between that denim pad and so the surface. So you're creating a liquid sandpaper, you're, basically. You're basically creating a liquid sandpaper. You're chewing that paint off. And luckily for me, I just right. don't use any of that crap anymore. So. Right, yeah, wow. <laughs> Stop. So, I just, so yeah. So. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Stop. All right, moving on. Trizac, no, no, we're, that. we're moving on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Uh, so I use that beep. stuff. Okay, no, John, Var right. class. John Vargo, regardless of size, design, or cost, McGuire sanding pads shown or its 3M equivalent are as good as it gets for this process. Thank you for putting that in there, John. It's, it's simple tools that work great. Been okay. around for Keep decades. Okay, now we're going to go to Sarah. We have just a couple left. Okay. Um, do you wet sand the same for headlights, or can you use a buffer... Is there a difference besides plastic and paint? Uh, you know, a good question. Hey, and there's a million ways to skin that cat. In my detailing Meow. classes, I, I show uh, three-inch Abrolon discs. They come in 500,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and you can slap those on a Griot's Garage G3 and or a port cable with a three-inch backing plate, and you can machine sand. Uh, you could actually hand sand with them. You could use any kind of sandpaper you want. Uh, but however you want to do it, just machine sand it down, uh, try to finish that at 2,000 or higher, and then get a wool pad with a rotary buffer and anybody's compound, plastic buffs out pretty easy. Uh, do note that you will leave holograms if you stop with a wool pad on a rotary. So if you want to be a pro, you should come back with some kind of foam pad and an orbital polisher, anybody's brand, and redo your, holo your rotary work so you don't leave holograms in the headlights. Okay. And I've actually seen some cars with some pretty good headlights where you could see the holograms if you didn't take them out. Okay, last question. Okay. Uh, Jan <laughs> Warner, are the, are the Megs Sandy Paper Maguire's Sandy Paper still the same as decades ago? Yes, same thing, Nick and Nick and Brand. Nick and, Nick and Nick and Nick and. Yep. All right, now, Ryan, let's leave with you. Is there any questions that you have for Mike? While you have him here live and in the flesh, is there anything that you have for him that you would like asked? No, I just no? want to thank him for the opportunity bringing me out. Hey, thanks for letting us work on your car. Well, yeah, you, we kind of had the opportunity because <laughs> we had your car. Yeah. Yeah, this worked out good for us, and we appreciate you trusting us with your car. And yes, the good news is, is you got your car completely sanded down. By the time we leave tonight, buffed out, and we're going to put a ceramic coating on it. Yeah, you're, you're uh, throwing Slinging water. Yeah, all over <laughs> the place. All right, with that being oh, I never put the slide up. Read the comments down below. Sorry. We do have a $10,000 prize pack going out. Uh, I'm going to give you another clue or what's going in there. Last week I announced that it's going to be the Rupes Nano, long, long nano kit that's going oh, in there. the long neck. Yep. yep. Then Griot's Garage is donating a huge package for there, so we'll have all the Boss Cranes pads. What do you call it? Possibly a polisher in there, too. Woo. So we're getting two polishers, some cat pads, chemicals, and believe me, there's more. You got to think, there's $10,000 worth of products and everything that are going into this stuff. So if you have not heard about this contest, you're hearing about it now, all you have to do is become a subscriber to us on YouTube, and once we hit 100,000 subscribers, we will randomly pick a subscriber from those 100,000 subscribers, and you will win all that. That's a lot of stuff. That's a ton of stuff. So, if you're looking and getting into detailing, or you're a pro that's like, hey, I could use some extra cash because of all this stuff that's going on in the world right now, this could be a perfect opportunity for you. Can't win if you don't play. They keep on saying that about the lottery, <laughs> but you keep on forgetting to get in. It's true. All right, so with that being said, thank you all for tuning. Um, Thanks, did you Ryan. learn everything? Yes, thank you. And we appreciate you doing the car, and I appreciate you being here, because now I don't have to help him anymore. And we'll be back at 6 p.m. to do the other side by machine. All right, see you then. Bye-bye. Later.